so hello everyone to those who are watching it live and those who are later watching it in youtube uh, my name is sashwat mukherjee and i welcome you to the final episode of in conversations with for the month of april our today's guest is mr josh hotado who is the founder and ceo of potent films and a very well known name associated with rrr so josh how are you doing today and how are you feeling i'm doing well uh, thank you for having me yes yes so uh, can you tell us a little, uh, can you tell us a, your background about how you became involved with the film industry and how this affair with the film started um well i've always been a fan since i was a kid uh and when i reached uh high school uh when i was about 15 years old a friend of mine um was uh, far more into movies than i was and he started introducing me to a lot of international films um that i just didn't know existed really so uh at that point it was mostly uh it was in the heyday of sort of uh hong kong action films making yes. their way over to yeah, the us yeah, yeah. and sort of japanese uh films there was you know uh uh cool stuff coming out of france and belgium uh yeah. that that were just not on my radar at all that my friend showed me and um so we he ended up going to to film school for a bit uh and i i didn't go to film school uh, i went to okay. to college for something else entirely but uh that sort of it sparked something in me that i just kept wanting to find more and more and more films and so uh it, for a long time uh, until i was almost uh probably till i was about 30 years old it was just i just like watching movies that's all it really was mm -hmm. i i liked watching them and collecting them so like a film and, buff and sort of like a film buff like a film buff for okay. sure um and and uh somewhere in the mid 2000s um my curiosity uh led me to start looking into what was coming out of India because <clears throat> nobody uh at that time was really talking about any Indian films at all in the US it wasn't i mean at, unless it was perhaps lagan but that was basically it yes. um and and even still today uh you know with the yeah. exception of of triple r it's it's kind of unknown territory for a lot of people it hasn't yes. really cracked the mainstream yes. and so my curiosity just led me in that direction and i i had a few that i rented from netflix or i live in uh, dallas texas which is a huge uh population center for for indian uh immigrants um there's a lot of them uh, yeah. around here and so yeah. because of that there are you know there are stores that cater to the population so there are lots of uh, indian grocers here um and at the time in about 2005 2006 uh and, and thereabouts all of the indian grocers had uh video rentals also so they would import yeah. like all the dvds from from india and and they would rent them out uh and i would just go and buy them off the shelf i would just buy yeah. because they were pretty they were relatively inexpensive um i would look at the covers uh you know i didn't really know many of the actors or or directors or filmmakers or anything like that at that point um and you know netflix now has a ton of indian uh, yeah. content but at the time exactly. didn't yeah um yes. and so it was just up to me to go to the store and look at look at what you know they had and i started off with with hindi films watching hindi films because they were the most accessible and easy to find and then i had i went online to to you know to message boards you know for to for suggestions for things to go and look for and that's when i started branching out into other indian films uh tamil films and telugu films and then eventually yeah. you know malayalam and kannada films and and things like that contemporary uh yeah. pretty much mainstream stuff at the time um and when i once i got into those i would go to back to the 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 grocers and start looking through the telugu movies uh on the shelves which again didn't know anything about and a lot of the time uh i have a ton of them in my other in my in my bedroom um the mm -hmm. the telugu films not only was i unfamiliar with them but all of the text was in telugu also so i was just completely uh going by the seat of my pants to see what what yeah. i liked what i didn't like and that sort of thing and so around 2010 uh there's a website called twitch film where we're now called screen anarchy that uh yeah 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 screen anarchy yes I was a I was an avid reader of the website and they had posted something about an Indian film and no one really knew anything about it and I happened to know a little bit about uh it was actually Magadhira it was uh, Rajamouli's film Magadhira at the time um yeah. and I 
posted in the comments of one of their pieces just about that I knew about these sort of things. And they asked me to, to join the team uh, because they didn't have anybody that really knew anything about Indian films. And at the time, I didn't know much, but I knew more than most people. Um, yeah. And so that's where it started was writing about Indian films uh, and, you know, going to the theaters because uh, they all um, almost all the Indian films open here, all the big ones. Um, yeah. And so I would go to Nowadays, the theater. Nowadays, Indian and, films open worldwide here. Yeah, in fact, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like any other yeah. Film. Uh, at the time, there were, uh, you know, in, in 2008, 2009, 2010, there were fewer of them, but they still opened here. Uh, and so I would yes. go and see the those releases and, and, and write about them. And... I was, uh, at the time, the only non-Indian person writing about <laughs> Indian films yeah. regularly. Uh, yeah. Once in a while, something would sneak through. Uh, somebody would write about something for one of the big websites if it was a big Bollywood release. But no one was writing about you know uh, the new Telugu films, or the new Tamil films, or even most of the new uh, uh, Bollywood films, uh, uh, Hindi films. And so I just sort of jumped into that writing and that led to programming, which then led to uh, this work with, with potentate films and, and triple R. Um, so that's, that's kind of where it all came from. Uh, and there's, yes. there was a point when I first started in, in 2010 that there was, there was excitement about, uh, I, I found kind of interesting that people were in India were very excited to have someone who wasn't, Indian writing about their stuff and so a lot of people started coming to me and asking me like would you watch this would you watch this so that's that yeah, was right. yeah that was a big thing yes so like you you talked a lot about uh, Indian films and especially you know even South Asian films and other Asian mm -hmm. movies so what do you think is the difference uh, between the kind of films which is made in the traditional Hollywood way or the US films versus Asian films and specifically Indian films according to you what is the main difference apart from songs and dances well I mean that's a lot of it uh, there are you know certain tropes that 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 uh, Indian and Asian films uh, I mean I think Indian and Asian films are a very different categories but uh, that's that they they do differently you know there's the whole the, the concept of, of the masala film, the concept of these like yeah. big multi-genre films um, that are, you know, and there's things, and I, I've, I've talked about this uh, in, in one of the interviews that, that we ended up doing with the New York Times a few months ago, um, that there is the perception of Indian films among non-Indian people, especially in the States here, mainstream audiences, is that they are these big overwrought, big, you know, far yeah. too long. They have ridiculous action, ridiculous um, uh, songs. People burst into song, and this is the this is the the perception outside of India of these is that yeah. people will just burst into song out of nowhere, um, and it's a deterrent uh, for a lot of uh, a lot of viewers, uh, potential new viewers, I should say. Yeah. And um, but when it's done well, which you know is becoming rarer these days, um, you know it's it's really special to watch um and there's the, the you know the indian audience is accustomed to this and they've grown up with this and they know what they're going yes. into whereas an american audience doesn't really know they have no frame of reference you know exactly um, yeah. and so part of uh when i started writing and, and programming and and doing this uh, helping film festivals curate uh films part of what the the job is is to find the films that aren't going to be super alienating, you know, find the Indian films yeah. that will, uh, that, that the audience can, can view on their own terms and not necessarily uh, have to know like a billion things in the background, uh, have a lot of background yeah. knowledge. And so that's, that's yeah. been, that's been part of the challenge. All right. So talk us, uh, you know, like tell us a little bit about your company about your distribution company, what does it do and what does it specialize? Okay, so uh, Potentate Films, we're still figuring out what exactly the company is because we, <laughs> we, we, uh, we by we, I mean me, like it's, it's just me. Um, we, uh, we formed uh, in order to work on uh, Triple R uh, and the, the okay. re-release and, and the promotions and the publicity and, 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 and that sort of thing. Uh, more or less in a consulting position. Uh, for them. All right. 
so like uh, this company was formed due to rrr it's not before that so it it's a new found company yeah okay yeah. and and it, it and it's like uh, it, its mission is to like uh, can you a little bit you talked about you know theatrical consulting and everything so what mm-hmm. exactly is that because i'm hearing it for the first time uh, theatrical releases consulting and everything associated with that so the idea is to to start doing all of the all of the work uh, that i've done with with indian films in you know initially when i started writing it was to to get the word out that these films are out there and to, to go yeah. see them. Um, and then for programming, it was the same thing. It's like, oh, here's a film that you might not have seen. Let me put it in a film festival where people are going to go anyway. But there's there's uh, a bigger audience to be found. Um, you know, with these films that, that release over here, there are just so many of them. Um, you know, uh, you you obviously know in India, yes, a, yes, dozen, a dozen films a week are over Exactly, um, yeah. And so there's there's no way for an audience that's not familiar with the films, filmmakers or performers to know which one's worth their time. Um, and I think part of what 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 the goal is with potentate films is to 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 curate a bit, you know, to find the ones that are going to be worthwhile to help them reach a new audience, uh, like we did with Triple R, uh, along with Variance Films, uh, to to take the ones that that really could make a difference, that could make uh, a, a new audience. Uh, into a new audience of fans uh, and and yes. help help them to navigate the the North American market because uh, it's it's a very different sort of system that they aren't accustomed to working with. They don't know the players. They don't know um, you know how how the marketing works out here because until Triple R, there really hasn't been any marketing for Indian films out here because they don't need it. Um, yes, the, exactly. the, yeah. the local Indian audiences are just paying attention to all the, all the marketing from back in India. So, you know, they see the trailers on YouTube. The trailers don't necessarily come in front of other films. So like an Indian yes. film trailer is only going to play in front of an Indian film. So if you're not at that screening, you don't know things are coming. Um, and yes. so trying to, to put those, uh, those films in front of a new audience um, and encourage them to come out and, and see it. You know, there there are not every film is great, but there are going to be some that are going to connect with people. Yes, and that's, yes, that that's is, kind that of what I want to do. True. Yes. So you know, you you mentioned that uh, you know it is very difficult to understand the market. And over here, I'm kind of deviating a little bit. You know, I watched a very old interview of Anurag Kashyap as we were speaking about before the interview began, where he where he told that earlier Indian films were being sold to NRI audiences in the West. And not to foreign audiences in the West, and this is what exactly RRR cracked. In fact, he told this with the interview with with in Galgada Plus, I think, if I'm not wrong. He mm-hmm. told that RRR was the first film which was sold to non-Indians, because otherwise the business model was that Indian films are getting sold to Indians living abroad. So, can you tell us a little bit about this uh, selling of films to non-Indian audiences? What exactly do you have to keep in mind? Well, you, you know, you have to know what what the audiences out here are going to respond to. Um, okay. I, I think he's right. Uh, it's you know, the same thing I was just saying. There, yeah. There's not there's not marketing um, to, to non Indian audiences, and so you know, I I have been uh, a, a a huge fan. We'll just take Raj Mali as a as an example because it's, yes, he's yes. kind Obviously, of the starting yes, point for this. Yes, sure. um, so. I've been a huge fan pretty much since I started watching Indian films. Someone had recommended to me that I go, uh, that I see Magadira and I saw that I thought it was great. And then, you know, I just kind of went from there and really my first foray into uh, programming film festivals was with Ega because uh, when it came out, yeah. you know, uh, at the time in, in 2012, Telugu films were playing out here in the States, of course, but they didn't play with subtitles. So there yeah. was no way for uh, a non-Indian audience to go into that film uh, and you know they weren't going to give it a shot. I did because I'm crazy. But yeah. uh, I saw it twice without subtitles, and you you don't yeah. need them for the film. Like you know what's happening the whole time. It's it's really yes, yes. pretty special. But I knew like at that point that someday this guy is going to be something special. Like he'd already made all these great films, oh, yes. but someday everyone else is going to know it. You know the non-Indian audience is going to know it, and that's like I didn't want. I felt like it would be criminal if if a film like Ega played only to Indian audiences and NRI audiences and never to anyone else. Yeah. And so that's why I, I helped him program it uh, or help program it at film festivals. Um, and 
it's it's identifying those films and those filmmakers who are able to I mean, there's nothing not Indian about Rajamouli's films. They're very Indian. Yeah. Uh, all of them are. But he does them, He and he's gotten better with it over the years. He, yeah. he constructs them in such a way that it does all of the things that Indian audiences need. Also, is very, uh, they're, they're universal. You know, the, the big action sequences that he has in all of his films. Yes. Like, those are things that we love, you know some of the biggest action, uh, biggest franchises in, in Hollywood are, are you know, the, the yeah. Fast and Furious films, which are yeah. big, ridiculous action, Mission Impossible films, those sort of things. Yeah. So action translates. You know, it's one of those things where you have to figure out, like, okay, what, what about film is universal? You know, what yes. will appeal to universal audiences? And action is one of those things. Um, yes. Action doesn't have a culture. You know, yeah. action doesn't require background. Yes, um, so that is the whereas, reason why even those action films from Hong Kong, you know, the, like Jackie Chan films, you yeah. know. In fact, I grew up watching those films, Jackie Chan films, and I, yeah. uh, in fact, those those you know, Snake in the Eagle's Shadows and everything, and those were like hardcore rooted Chinese films, but it translates to a worldwide audience. So you are you are just saying that. Yeah, exactly. And if you think about it, the same thing with 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 uh, with Hong Kong films and with Ang Lee's uh, uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which was a huge hit. It was yes. a huge hit because the action translates, you know, exactly. it wasn't the, the, the longer, you know, dramas that are, that are connecting with, with the, with the exception of Korean films, Korean films have managed to do that quite well with yes. Parasite, which is, you know, a, yeah. a, a, a satire drama, which it, I'm still like, I love the film, but I'm still shocked that it was as, as popular as it was because it is, it's very yeah. Korean and it doesn't have some of those things yes. that we kind of feel like translate. Um, but you know, there, there are films that I feel uh, could have been big hits uh, or, or, or even any kind of hits at all. Uh, you know, Triple R was just the one that we decided to take a chance on. Um, yeah. And it obviously worked out. So, you know, you have, you have worked with Rajamouli, sir. So what it's like working with us as Rajamouli, you know, give us a little bit <laughs> insight into that. Well, okay. So the first time um, with, with Ego, when we, I first... So I saw it and I, I, I wrote my review and the next morning I had an email uh, from a film festival in France who had written, who had read my review and wanted to see the film because they didn't have a way to see it. And so yeah. I had to figure out how to get in touch with him, which was not easy. You know, he's a huge star. Yeah. You don't just like go and exactly. email a huge star. You have to figure out how <laughs> yeah. to get to them. Yeah. So I, 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 I had some people um, do some digging and someone who was working at, uh, with his company at the time or with the, the PR company at the time, helped me out. And uh, initially my first email from him was several months later because I was going through other channels to get the film working. Mm -hmm. My first official email from him, he, he, uh, he responded that he thought when he read my review that I was just a Telugu person who was using a fake name because no one else, <laughs> like non-Indians yeah. wouldn't go see his movie in the theater. Um, and it wasn't until... Uh, and we, I kept in touch with him over the years, an email here or there, you know, just to see what was going on. If when I saw, you know, the Bahubali films, I, I sent him a nice yeah. note, you know, telling him that I, that I liked them. And then I got to uh, on my honeymoon in, in 2016, after I got married, we were, my wife and I were invited to visit him for the first time, like uh, on the set of, of Bahubali, the conclusion. So we spent a day uh, on set at Remoji Film City um, and he was just, he was very, very nice, but it was only a couple of hours. Like it wasn't, wasn't yeah. working with him. It was just like kind of him thanking me for helping getting his film out and that sort of yeah. thing. And so when we came around to the triple R project, yes. um, we were working with him, uh, his son, Karth, uh, Karthikeya was, was really yeah. sort of steering the ship, uh, in terms of, you know, what they wanted to accomplish and, and that sort of thing. And Rajamouli, the whole time, you, I, I don't think I ever caught him without a smile on his face. He was always just wow. so um, amenable to everything that was going on. Uh, they were nervous about how much work it was going to be. Uh, once we got past the initial release and started talking about, you know, the awards circuit, uh, which is a totally different beast um, and very intense. Yes. And it was uh, it was something that uh, my partner and, and I had to sort of talk them into you know that it was going to be worthwhile because initially there was some hesitation 
because it would, you know, it is, it's, it's very busy. It's, it's constant interviews, constant events. Yeah. Um, and on part of it was the fact that he wanted to, to get to work on his next film. They'd already had like, uh, they've been doing yeah, with the one with Mahesh wanted... Babu, which you are doing. The one with Mahesh yeah. Babu, and they yeah. wanted to, they wanted to start the actual writing process and they had to put that off a little bit for, for the sake of the awards, uh, circuit. But, you know, every time uh, I, I was able to interact with him, he was just, he was so, he was very kind. He was very giving of his time. Uh, I was able to host several uh, uh, Q&As with him, you know, had, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, like I said, a lot of the, the work uh, in terms of Triple R was done through, uh, through CART and through the, uh, the promotions agency who were extremely helpful. Walls and Trends and, and, and Hyderabad were extremely uh, helpful and you know part of the reason this whole thing came together in the first place because they they were always on top of of their job which is a blessing because you never know uh yeah. what kind of uh team you're working with but but Raja Muli, uh himself he was just he was so excited about about everything that was going on because you know we and he he said it in interviews as well and we saw it on his face that he never in a million years thought that he would be in this position, you know, yes, exactly. um, to be now uh, uh, and a face on the international film scene. Because even when I first spoke to him all those years ago, uh, like I said, he thought I was Telugu because he thought no one else was, was watching his films. And yes. to, to have him be able to, to see like, look, you do good work, you make good films. And if you have the right uh, people behind you, we can get the films out there and people will love them and people love, uh, love triple yes. R. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was every, every minute of every day that, that I was, uh, with him or working with him. Uh, it was always about, you know, he, he was very appreciative of everything that was going on, which was very, very nice. The, the most humble man I, I've, I've, uh, ever had the pleasure of working with. And, uh, and that was that was really what I took away from it was that he's uh, the humility and uh, and and his just his pure joy like it was it was fun to work with him. Yes, yes. So you know you were mentioning about this Oscar campaign and many of uh, us over in India because this is the first time uh, uh, like this is the first time an Indian film has won an Oscar in the best original song category. So many people are not aware about this Oscar campaign thing which happened. So can you tell us a little bit about what? is exactly an Oscar campaign and how did RRR kind of, you know, plan one Oscar campaign and it, I think it started somewhere around July 2022 or somewhere August to July 2022 and it continued till the time uh, the Oscar ceremony happened. So what exactly goes into that and why is an Oscar campaign necessary? Okay. So uh, what, what, okay. So in, in terms of triple R kind of the origin of the Oscar campaign, the award campaign there uh, was, uh, sort of a grassroots uh, effort from fans of the film. Uh, okay. it, when we when we when we started uh, working on the on the re-release, it wasn't that wasn't part of the plan. The plan was to put the film in theaters uh, in front of a new audience and you know show them uh, what what Triple R was and sort of what Indian films can be. Um, yes. So that that was initially it. Um, we we had planned to release it for one night. We had a couple of follow-on dates, but nothing really big planned. Um, but what ended up happening was people just kept going back and kept going back and kept going back, and the theaters kept being full, and it was it was really pretty wonderful. And then uh, that July August time frame, we started hearing from people, uh, fans that were like, "This is the greatest film. If it's not nominated for blah blah blah, like that was that was cool, um, and it was very it was very nice to hear." But then. Um, around August, we started hearing that same kind of, uh, that same kind of, uh, uh, opinion from people who actually work in, uh, awards PR and awards, yes. uh, campaigning. Um, and that's, you know, our teams at Synetic and Divergence and Accolade PR, the three teams that we had working on the film, um, they came to our team to say, look, we think this really has a chance. Um, if you're, yes. if you're up for it, you know, if, if you can get them to, if you can talk them into it. And so then we started to take it seriously and it was around the time, uh, and it's an Oscar campaign, essentially what it is, 
the whole idea is to, you know, or awards campaigns in general, you yeah. need to get the film in front of an audience. Uh, the people who are voting need to see it, you know, and there are hundreds of films running campaigns, you know, yeah. um, films that probably have no business running campaigns run campaigns. Yeah. And yeah. so there's, uh, there's, there's too much choice. So part of the campaign yeah. is to bring awareness to the voters. Like here is this film, here's what people are saying about it. Go see it. Uh, a lot of that is done for most films, uh, through PR emails, through, uh, private screening links, you know, Vimeo links, things like that, uh, yes. or discs, I'll, you know, it's less so, but I'm, I'm a, a member of a, a, a film critic society. And so ev around from October to December of every year, every day, there's something coming in the mail for, for a yeah. film they want me to vote for. Um, but with triple R, the real thing, the, the thing that needed to happen in order to make this successful was we needed to get people who are going to vote for the film or, or who could potentially vote for the film into a cinema with other people. That was the, that was okay. the thing because that's where triple R works best. It works best in a packed house. Um, yes. That is true. And so, and so, uh, we did the, the, you know, the, the screener link thing a little bit, the film had already been on Netflix. I mean, obviously we all know that it's, it's not in the original Telugu language, which to, you yeah. know, takes some of the, some, a little bit away yeah. from it, but, but for, for a, for the large majority of American audiences, it's not that big a deal because they don't speak Hindi either, you know? So yeah. it's, it's, it's a, it's a subtitle situation either way, but getting the, the, uh, the people into theaters was the main thing. Um, and in doing that, uh, our, our team set up so many screenings, just a ton of, of award screenings. And, you know, part of the problem, not, not problem, but part of the thing was we had to try and get um, people after watching Triple R who had never seen an Indian film, right? Which was, a, this was a lot of people's first experience with Indian film was Triple R. And a lot of the people had no frame of reference and they just wanted to talk about it. They wanted, to, as soon as they came out, they were like, what about this? What about this? How did you do this? How did you do that? And so we had yeah. uh, Raj Mooli there for a lot of those screenings um, as well as uh, later in the game, uh, we had Kiravani out um, when when that you know yeah, because yeah. Uh, when original song uh, was was the thing that we were like you know what we love all this film he sh I still think uh, we should have gotten one of the te the top ten spots for best picture yeah 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 you know exactly yeah and uh, you know from from everything that we've heard from from people you know uh, we've talked to a lot of folks about um, this you know we feel like the film was probably you know, number 11 or number 12, like it was, it was right on the edge of, of getting into that, oh. uh, into that category. Um, but, but song, we were pretty sure, like it, it, that was, that was something that we, we were, we were fairly confident that we, we could focus our energy there. And, and, uh, if, if there was money to be spent, if there were promotions that need to be done, um, and we needed to focus them on something, then best original song seemed like the way to go. And, you know, obviously that worked out. Um, so we yeah. had Kiravani come out uh, and do a lot of those. Uh, Kiravani and Chandra Bose at the very end uh, yes, yes. came out to do after the Golden uh, Globes lots. and all those uh, after, the, yeah, after yeah, yeah. the Golden Globes award seasons and all those. Yeah, yeah. And so that was that was uh, that was kind of the, the campaigning is really getting people in the theater with the film. And so the first real uh, real uh, event that we held. Uh, with that in mind um, was the Beyond Fest screening in Los Angeles uh, at the Chinese theater yeah. that we had at the end of September. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And that was... And other uh, Rajamoli I mean, films were also screened, I think, if I am not wrong. You know, other, his correct. other films were also yeah. at, was screened, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes. And so th that that was actually a fun thing to do. because, And I'm still, uh, I'm still distributing those other films as well. Um, but that was really fun to do because the programming director at, at Beyond Fest, which is it's a genre festival based in Los Angeles, um, which uh, if you don't know, a genre festival is a film festival that shows mostly horror, uh, yes. you know, fantasy, action, crime, uh, those sorts of films. You know, not a lot of yes. uh, stoic dramas. Mainstream in those kind of, uh, yeah. But uh, the film, uh, the 
programming director over there is a man named uh, Evram Ursoy, who I've worked with at, at Fantastic Fest, the fest that I work in, uh, in Austin, and he doesn't work there anymore, but uh, he's a fan of, of Raja Mooli as well, and they wanted to go big. They wanted to do uh, as much of Raja Mooli's uh, work as possible. Uh, I was able to get the team to give me six of Raja Mooli's yeah. films. Um, oh, wow. The other six we weren't we weren't able to book but um but yeah that first that first uh beyond fest screen at the chinese theater so a 930 seat theater we had some yeah that was the first yes, like yes. A... we saw clips of that in youtube yeah. you know people are dancing in natu natu i saw it, it was it's an that, imax theater screen that was that was uh that, that was something uh it really was it was the you know i uh <laughs> so that was the first time that we had actually invited academy members you know for 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 ampass academy members to the screening to come see what the what the big deal was because you know the screening sold out in something like 25 minutes the oh. first time which was you know we were we were surprised the second time we did it, it sold out in 90 seconds so oh god that was that was pretty crazy but uh we wanted that was the first like official uh stop on on the awards circuit just to sh to bring people out and to show them this film to show them what the film does to an audience because honestly you know, I saw it three times on opening weekend, um, the, the first opening weekend, because I'm a big Raja Mooli fan and I knew I was going to go, wanted to go see it. Um, and I hadn't, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen at the Beyond Fest screening. Like all of that stuff that happened was, uh, was spontaneous. I had no idea, but we were obviously very excited for it. And I had Raj Mooley sitting just like behind me, uh, a, a row uh, a, or two over, and I just kept looking back at him. And he had the biggest smile on his face, and he was just he he was shocked by by the American reaction because this was before uh, you know all of the reaction uh, videos, all the videos of people yes. dancing in the aisles started yeah, that yeah. night, and uh, the fact that it just became the thing to do like later on was something that yeah, we were, exactly. were still pretty amazed by. Um, but yeah, that was the first step in the awards campaign was getting it out there and like showing people who vote on the awards, like this doesn't happen with every film, you know, yeah. this kind of excitement in the theater doesn't happen all the time. Um, and so, you know, we would get, uh, that was a big major public screening. And then with awards uh, campaigning as as time goes on, you hold a lot of screenings that are just Academy voters, just film critics, you know, not the general public. Um, yes. Because again, you want we wanted them to be in the theater with the film because that's where it works. Um, yeah. And exactly. even a lot of times, those kinds of screenings are very quiet, very stoic. People are just sort of watching the film yeah. and taking it in and trying to, you know figure out with you know all those sorts of things and they weren't dancing in the aisles at, at those academy screenings but they were cheering which is something you don't usually do or uh yeah. at that sort of thing um and you know it was uh it was hard uh for for the team um like i said uh part of the thing that was that Rajmu was hesitant about was the amount of time he would have to devote to this project mm -hmm. and it was a lot of time but i think eventually um, you know, once he started seeing the way that people were reacting to the film and the way that, you know, other filmmakers were reacting to the film and being able to, to talk with Steven Spielberg and talk with James Cameron and those sorts yeah, of things, James you know, Cameron, yeah. um, you know, those, that's, he was like a kid in a candy store. Uh, and you, you can, yes, you, yes, you exactly. see those clips, and there, is a, those there, clips. there is a video, there is a video, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. James Cameron is explaining that I saw it twice, once with my wife and mm -hmm. he stood up every time and it was like, and when I was also watching, it was like, my God, James Cameron is talking about an Indian film and this yeah. way, in fact, us audience also never imagined that it will be happening someday or sometime mm -hmm. with an Indian film, very deeply rooted in our Indian culture. So yeah. that's, that, that's great to hear so you, you said that there was you know th there is a lot of time which needs to be devoted and everything so mm -hmm. from your end from a distributor's point of view uh, distributing in the american circuit what were the challenges you had to face because people uh, are not familiar with the indian films and stuff like that well and, and and that's where that's where the film does a lot of the work um you know you can do uh, campaigning all you want but if the film is not going to do uh, the majority of the work for you it's not going to go anywhere yeah. it's a it's not inexpensive 
uh, it's it, it does cost quite a bit of money. And, you know, that's obviously a concern. We have to figure out, you know, how much it's going to cost and where that money is coming from and all those sorts of things. Um, and so that was a challenge. You know, like I said, the, the, the time commitment is a huge challenge, um, trying to figure out how how long he's going to need to spend. Because initially the the plan was at the very, very beginning, when we when we first got them to say, let's give it a shot, the, the time commitment that they were willing to, uh, that Karth and the team were willing to to give us was two weeks because they wanted to get back to work. Um, and so that would be two weeks in Los Angeles and then back to India until something else happened, you know, because there there's phases of things that happen. It's not just all one big run up. It's, you know, yes. Uh, yes. there are, uh, there's the, the short list. Uh, there's a long list of all the films that are eligible. And then there's the short list where they cut it down to, you know, a certain number of films that then another group yes. can vote on later to get to the final group that's going to be Nomination, actually on yeah. on the broadcast. Correct. Um, and so each time one of those thresholds is passed, um, a couple of things happen. You know, films and filmmakers sort of fall away from the pack, you know, necessarily as as, uh, you know, if they don't make it through one of those rounds, then they can stop spending money on on their thing, you know. Yeah. But the thing is that once you do get past that threshold, that's another big commitment of uh, of dollars and time that you need to yeah. make. You know, you can't you can't just start and have it be the same all the way through because it's a different. You have to get to more people uh, uh, as you go through these things, and uh, you know that was that was the biggest challenge was just putting together the amount of time that we needed. Um, you know, having Raj Mumi out there talking to people having uh, Kiravani talking to people. And one of the great things about Triple uh, R is that, like I said before, it invites it invites discussion in a lot of ways, um, but certainly on the technical uh, aspects of the film, which, you know, are top notch in terms of, you know, what Indian films have produced so far. Um, yeah. There was, there was a lot to talk about. And so, you know, I, everyone talks about uh, Kiravani's music, which is, yeah. which is great. And obviously, people agree with that but you know yeah. i was very big on uh because i've been a fan for so long and i know a lot of these uh not know personally but i know the work of a lot of these people like i wanted to make yeah. sure that they they were in included in the discussion here you know uh, when you have someone um you know like uh, like Senthil kumar um the, yes. the cinematographer uh does exceptional work here and so i had a friend of mine who who writes for American Cinematographer Magazine, um, yeah. and we connected them. So let's let's let Senthil Kumar talk about what he did in this big outlet. You know, let's let uh, Rama Rajamouli, uh, who did the costume design, talk about her work with the costume design and how she created those outfits and and the the challenges those presented. Let's talk to Sabu Cyril about the production design. Yeah, so and the what production that means. design, yeah. Yeah, and you know, I've I'm a huge Sabu Cyril fan. I have been for years. Yeah, the, he has worked on time, many films, many yeah, popular I mean, Indian my, films. One of one of my one of my first uh, Indian film experiences was Om Shanti Om, and the production design on that film oh, was incredible. Yeah. Oh, yes, it's, exactly. It's 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 gorgeous, and uh, you know he's you know, and then you know worked on Enthron with Shankar, and he's worked on you know on the Bahubali films, and, and that's I yes. first time, actually the only time I've met him in person was on the set of Bahubali, and. I was sort of starstruck and he had no idea who I was because I was just this random person walking <laughs> around their film set. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I was, I was sort of dumbfounded when I, when I met him and you know, you don't really, I'm sure that production yeah. designers don't get that reaction very often. It's not a, it's not a glamorous <laughs> position, but uh, yeah. you know, that's, that was something that I found very, very exciting to do was to help get all these technicians, you know, credit because these are world-class technicians that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That people they only are about. taking the film to the next level because without the technical mm -hmm. achievements and everything, uh, it could not yeah. even. And especially in today's age, where you know these technical factors a lot into what the final product is. In fact, from even from audience perspective, people are more like, "How was the quality of the VFX? How is the quality mm -hmm. of the sound? Everybody is aware about this Dolby Atmos and all these kind of VFX. Yeah, yeah. Technicians matter a lot." And, for sure, uh, for sure. And the VFX, the VFX for this film were a big yes. thing, um, you know. Yes, and, Srinivas Mohan, Srinivas Mohan. So he Srinivas Mohan and uh, and Pete Draper at, at Makuta, um, 
uh, effects. And, you know, those guys have been working with Raj Mouli for years and, and yeah. you've been, a- been able to see and like watch their progress because it, it, VFX in, in, in India specifically have, have come a long way in the last 10 years. Um, yeah. 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 Yes. And, uh, I think that this is certainly one of the best examples of, if not the best example of, 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 uh, effects being integrated into the film uh, that that India has to offer so far. Yes, yes, that is totally true. In fact, in in terms of VFX, Shah Rukh Khan's Red Chili's company, Red Chili's VFX has been also working a lot, like since Rawan, mm-hmm. then Zero Fan, all of these, and especially in this film, also in YouTube. In in fact, in Makota VFX's channel only, there is this VFX breakdown of RRR. So I I'd seen very early footages of Rajamouli sir only. Take, there is this scene of uh, where NTR, uh, NTR is getting introduced, that beam is introduced, so the tiger mm-hmm. is coming, so Rajamouli himself is handling that green screen kind of a thing for mm-hmm. the reference. So his commitment is obviously, as you said, uh, his commitment is like, he, he, he spent six years on a film, so yeah, <laughs> obviously, if you can imagine. Not, not on purpose this time, not on purpose this yes, time. We yes. had a little bit, a little, little break in the yes. middle there for the whole world, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so uh, coming to you, you know, what, what are your future projects? What are you working on and what's, what's in the future for Portland Films? Well, like I said at the beginning, I, I think, um, you know, I, I'm looking at some other films to, to help them get out uh, into the world and into more mainstream consciousness, because that's, that's, that's the goal here is to, yes. you know, over the last year, we've, we've shown that Indian films are not just for Indian viewers. You know, there is, uh, with it. And it's, it's crazy that it's taken this long, um, for, for these kind of films to make any, any kind of real impression, um, on, on the audience. Um, and you know, not every film is going to be triple R, uh, but there are films out there, you know, uh, that, that could be something worth watching. You know, I've, with my programming uh, work over the years, it's one of the things that I've been uh, I've been doing on 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 that scale for a long time. So, for example, um, back in 2015, uh, I saw um, uh, Lee Joe uh Double Barrel, which is yes. not it's not a great film in its final form. Uh, it's it's very confusing. But you can tell if, yeah. if you've ever seen the film, you can tell that there's something special about the filmmaker here. He he has something, you know. We don't. Yes. He hasn't quite uh, honed it to a fine point yet, but there's something there. And so when when Angamali Diaries came out a couple of years later, uh, I you know I I talked to to Anurag Kashyap about it um, because I was I was I had booked his film uh, Raman Raghav at, at our film festival, and, yes. and we had done a lot of films uh, that year in 2016. We had an Indian uh, genre film yes. retrospective that I, I programmed, uh, uh, I programmed, uh, Raman Raghav or Psycho Raman as it was over here in the States. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, was Raman Raghav 2.0. It was released. Yeah, yeah. Years Raman Raghav 2.0. Uh, and then we showed Kalnayak, we showed, uh, Magadira and we showed Alavandan, uh, the, the, yeah. the Kamal Hassan film. And, um, and I, I told everyone I knew, like I had seen Angamali Diaries because it played in a local theater here. There, there was one theater that showed Malayalam films at the time and they showed one a week and that was the one they showed. And it was fantastic. And I wanted people to go yeah. see it. So between myself and Anurag Kashyap, we convinced them to take the film to the Cannes film market, which is a oh, side. Much the film. Yeah, the the much the film. film. Yeah. And so they did, they did a couple of screenings there and I had some friends that were in it that were at the, the market, which I haven't been to yet. I would really like to go. Um, yeah, and so I insisted that, like, you guys, if you trust me, because you keep asking me for for Indian films, go see this one at the film yeah. at, at the March to film. And uh, I was like, surely somebody's going to pick it up, and nobody picked it up. I think I think the Busan Film Festival in in Korea picked yeah, it up, which yeah. is another Busan Film pretty... Festival picks up a lot of Indian films. In fact, they uh, they're they're very uh, good. About many that. of Adilusan, yeah. In they fact, many of Adilusan's film. Yes, yes. In fact, may, many of Adil Hussain's films, Ragir and everything. Mm-hmm. But the thing is that uh, all those kind of uh, films which play in those film festivals, they usually don't find a buyer. Uh, so especially these offbeat kind true. of films, uh, they don't usually find buyers. So they end up in, because like personally, I know a few films which have been, which I've seen in you know, in festivals in Busan and everything like that. So years back, but they, till now they have not yet come in front of the audience. So 
there is some some film from 2015 14 which i have seen in festivals but like uh, th- those cannot find an audience because of that in fact yeah. uh, you know talking about anurag kashyap only he only told in fact there is this film called that girl in yellow boots uh, his mm-hmm. 2009 film in fact that yeah. was made to cover up his losses and it uh, then it has found a market outside india but it in that still remains unsold and yeah anurag kashyap is another you know as i told that i would love to have him on the show someday so yes and, uh, anurag kashyap is a, is a is a is a very interesting figure in in indian films uh, uh you know yeah, obviously yeah. obviously a great director but he's also uh he's a he's a great advocate exactly, for yes. for indian films and and filmmakers and you know it this this all kind of goes back and back and back years uh to Uh, someone like Ram Gopal Varma. Yes, yes, is, Satya. He only kind know, of gave him a break. His, yeah, well, you know, Ram Gopal, you can say what you want about uh, RGV's recent work, which has yes, been yes. less less yeah, well yeah, received, yeah. I should say, exactly. um, yes. than some of his early stuff. But it, you'd be hard pressed to find, uh, you know, some of an, an independent talent or an independent filmmaker in India that doesn't have something. uh doesn't owe something to Ram Gopal Varma you know yes. um you've got uh Anurag Kashyap obviously and then through Anurag Kashyap you have Manoj people Bajpai, like Vikram yeah. Mawane and Manoj Bajpayee yes. yeah of course Manoj Bajpayee uh, yes. and then uh, yeah totally so all like people, in fact uh, all, in fact in fact gangs of wasipur kind of launched the careers of all ravazuddin siddiqui he was also exactly. they are great actors but gangs of wasipur at the time it released nobody knew but now it's like a, it's having a cult status and cult following all over the world rather and in fact in india because it was it uh, as i remember it also premiered in cannes in uh, at director's mm-hmm. fortnight where it kind of won few jury awards and all those kind of things but in india it was you know empty theaters and everything and in fact in urta punjab and all those kinds of films also mm-hmm. so abhishek chobi is he's a, he's again a great director in mm-hmm. fact anurag kashyap was a producer associated with uh, i think uh, urta punjab too so he was again a great advocate for uh, releasing urta punjab and censorship and everything so yeah personally i'm i'm his big fan so yeah it was it was funny cuz when i was there when i was there in india like i mentioned for my honeymoon it was actually uh it was the opening weekend of of roman ragam 2.0 um which yeah. i i had seen previous i'd seen a screener for, it for out of can um and then the night that i landed in mumbai uh anurag invited me to the cast and crew screening um yes. so that was fun it was actually my first time meeting him and then also you know all the people that were there you know vasan bala was there uh, uh you yes. know nirish pandey was there there was uh you know nawazuddin siddiqui was there all everyone was there um and i was just kind of overwhelmed by the whole thing cuz it was my yeah, first time being yeah, in yeah. It, not only my first time in india my first time outside of the country and all of a sudden i'm in yeah. uh, a room full of all these like uh yes people super that talented people of, super talented people that <laughs> yeah, i have great yeah. respect for and i kind of i shrunk into a, into uh, into a little ball <laughs> yes. um yeah but then also that weekend like so i was sitting uh he invited me over to the phantom films office uh and so we just kind of sat and had lunch or whatever and they were it was the day after release so they were looking at all the release reports and for 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 Ram Rag of 2.0 and that weekend he uh he and his producer Ranjan Singh um uh had said oh well you know you can go see cuz i wanted to see a i wanted to see a movie in an indian theater like with with the audience and, the, which the, is a challenge for me because audience. yeah you know i was in mumbai and so it's not was going to go like to some big single screen anything it was just going to be i just want to go see a movie like what's a movie theater like in india i don't know so i wanted to go and so we ended up yeah. seeing it with the punjab and mostly because it was the only thing that was english subtitled that was subtitled in english yeah. because it's in punjabi and so yeah. like i knew if i'd gone to see a hindi film i would have just been lost the whole time so i was like <laughs> yeah. okay with the punjab is playing and it's and it's subtitled so i'll go see that so that was my first experience it was just my wife and i and then one other couple uh in the theater yeah be- But, because urta punjab again you know in, in theaters many people didn't go to watch yeah uh, in fact yeah. in fact anurag kashyap is pretty open about this in his interviews also says he says that uh, my films everybody watched five years after it's released so yeah. uh, and now now in, you know he again made history because if anybody could do it it's anurag kashyap his film is premiering at cannes in uncertain mm-hmm. regard and it, it's it's under the main competition and as you said you're working with him so all the best for that and we really hope Thank that you. it makes waves and cannes and obviously yeah. the entire world fraternity too in the film fraternity too 
because I, I I also personally think that it's high time that you know Indian film should be recognized globally and not just be reduced to you know we are having songs and dances because it's definitely not that. Uh, that's what the uh, the perception of Indian films was in the West. And uh, with that, I think that I, we will be ending my segment and we'll be moving to the audience questions. So sounds great. You know, uh, yes. So uh, like to those who are present over here, if you want to ask anything, you can just raise up your hand and or you can type in the chat box. Otherwise, I already have a few questions in my uh, in the Google form. So shall I go ahead with that, or anybody wants to ask anything, or it is somebody typing? I think somebody may be typing. So till then, I am asking the first question. Sure. Uh, uh so <clears throat> this to me yeah so so the first question is from mujah mujahidul islam his uh, question is sir who is your inspiration you know and I, he has not yet totally explained but i think that he means to ask his inspiration for in indian cinema you know who is your inspiration to you know work for indian cinema is there I mean, is there any particular if- or is it enough for indian cinema I think I've mentioned the, the the two that come to mind uh, immediately. Uh, both, you know, w- one of one of the reasons that I got into any of this in the first place was to try and make the world aware of Rajamouli's work. Um, yes. You know, uh, on on the one end, you know, the, and then the other would be would be Anurag Kashyap, who's who's been very kind uh, to me and who's yes. been very kind to a lot of people, and and, and yeah. also beyond that, beyond the, the the what he does to help other folks, he's he's a great filmmaker, which you know is. Yes is is wonderful and so having those two like on very opposite ends of the spectrum one on the major big time mainstream end and then the other very independent end i think i've got it covered like i i it's there's there aren't a lot of people in india or outside who 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 talk about both ends of the spectrum you know or and have respect for both ends of the spectrum uh you know i i talk to a lot of indian film fans and they are either like very heavily into the mainstream films yeah. or hate or they hate mainstream films and are only very indie, into independent films and i believe there's room for both yes. like there has to be exactly, uh, room exactly. for both and In any and industry to... any kind of film has to be so has to survive you know be it the big films or exactly. the small films it's it's always it's always it's art and commerce you can't do one without yes. the other like they it's it's, it's unsustainable um, yes, and so yes. it's it's those those two people on the on either end that are that are my big inspirations to continue working um, and that have been very kind to me uh, over the years as well. Yes, that's great. Uh, the next question is from uh, Shonath Shonath Mukherjee. His question is, uh, why don't we release a films view being a distributor directly into the internet along with the theatrical release that like side by side simultaneous release as it as nowadays it is very costly to go into the movie theaters and uh, 40 to 50 percent of the share of the ticket is what the producer receives so that's his question so like why is the not there a simultaneous release in ott and the uh, theatricals together i mean i feel like uh that's a tricky one uh, and you know it happened uh, a, a little while uh, during the pandemic, there were there were uh, more yes. releases that were doing sort of day and date, um, especially here in the U.S. I don't know uh, specifically about the situation in India, but in in the U.S., we had Warner Brothers, for example, who would release yeah, yeah, their yeah. films day and date, like uh, on HBO Max. Yeah. That was a, that was a big deal. Max, yes, yes. Um, uh, it's I think part of it is you know we want theatrical exhibition to continue to be sustainable. Um, and in order to make that happen, you have to give them a certain window uh, where the film is exclusively in theaters. And there's, like I said, that kind of collapsed during the pandemic because it had to, because people couldn't go to theaters because they were closed. I know in India, they were closed for a little bit longer than they were here. And even here, it it varied from state to state, it varied from city to city, you know, with local health uh, conditions and things like that. Um, But if if you want cinemas to stay alive, you have to have films that are going to be only in cinemas uh, for at least a, a, a time period. I know in India uh, and with Indian films around the world, uh, the there is an exclusive theatrical window most of the time uh, for theatrical yeah. films, but it's getting very short. So uh, yes, yes, it is getting very short. So sometimes it's sometimes <laughs> it's three or four weeks before the film is yeah. on uh, uh, Amazon or Amazon Prime or. Or, or yes. Netflix or whatever. And so you have to make your money in that time at the theaters. And 
it, it's it, you would have you would have a big fight from the theatrical exhibition side if you try to do everything day and date. Uh, what what the theaters choose to charge is a different conversation, I think. But uh, there needs to be some sort of exclusivity for a film if you're going to continue to have films in theaters. Yes. Yes. In fact, uh, now that you are mentioning, you know, there was this, uh, in, I think on the 16th of, on, on September sometime, 25th or 24th of September, there was this National Movie Day, Movie Theatre Day. So yeah, on yeah, that day, that. all the tickets, uh, all, all of the ticket prices were 75 rupees. So many films did a lot of business uh, during mm -hmm. that time. And, and, and I think the film which released simultaneously in theatres and on OTT was uh, Salman Khan's Radhe. So that, that released yeah, yeah. on Z5 and on theatres directly because that was during the COVID time. Uh, so Rohit has a question. Just one minute, Rohit. Uh, we have just one more audience question, which is already which was given. It's from Raghavendra. His question is, uh, which Indian actor is your favorite and you would love to work in future with? Who is your favorite Indian actor? Oh, there are so many. <clears throat> you know, I think yeah. um, uh, Nwazuddin Siddiqui is, is one of my favorite actors and has been for a long time. Um, there are a lot of uh, new, not new, they're not new, but, but young actresses are yeah. doing uh, great yes. work. You know, Radhikapte is doing, uh, does, does great work. Yeah. Um, Tilatama Shome is also doing uh, some, some very cool stuff. Uh, I would like to see more from, from uh, a lot of the South Indian performers as well. You know, the, the, the hot spot right now, uh, for the last couple of years, it's been Kerala and, and Malayalam films are, are doing are yes. doing great business, and you know uh, Dulkar Salman. Uh, I that same year that I showed uh, Raman Raghav, we also showed Kamati Padam, which is a fantastic film from from yeah. Rajiv Ravi. Um, you know, uh, there are just there's there's so many. Of course, I'm going blank right yeah. now, but you know, I have <laughs> my 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 dream my dream uh, collableration would be to to do something with Shah Rukh Khan because I'm you know oh, who doesn't sorry. want to work with Shah Rukh Khan? Everybody wants exactly. to work with Shah Rukh Khan. You know? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, I can, I can, even, I can even, totally the, even just to be the same. Uh, yeah, know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know that uh, I know Anurag Kashyap has has, has talked about you know projects yes. that they've supposedly had in, in development or whatever and i'm expecting when he when he makes that happen he gives me a call so i can come out and, and yeah. just <laughs> in fact, lurk yeah. around the set Shahrukh Khan was a know? senior Shahrukh Khan was a senior in college so they are from the same college so anurag uh, yeah. talks a lot about it so they are from the same college and Shahrukh Khan was a senior and they also mentioned that they they want to work together but it's not been kind of working out so yes everybody well, you know, collaboration it's, with Shah Rukh Khan. it's one of those <laughs> things you know what uh, anurag kashyap makes a certain kind of film and Shahrukh Khan makes a yes. certain kind of film and they don't mesh very well very very often yes, so yes. I, when it happens I, i'll be happy to see it yeah yeah we, we everybody will be happy because you know anurag kashyap is having his own fan following and obviously shahrukh khan is you know we don't need to mm -hmm. say about shahrukh khan's fan following and yeah. uh, yes as you said uh, you know just to you know for us personally it's if, if we, even if we can get to see him in front of us it will be like okay i don't need to do anything more yeah. and yes so okay uh, rohit you can go ahead you can unmute yourself and ask uh hello sir so i have i I like to know about one thing, sir. I am living in Mumbai, but I am a big fan of Tamil movies, especially Vijay Thalapathy. Yes. Project or something. I wanted to know that. That's it. One more time. Okay. I missed the middle parts. So he wanted to actually give you and convey a message that even though he is he lives in Mumbai, he's a big fan of Tamil cinema. Yes, sir. Favorite film is uh, uh, Tamil and Telugu film, South Indian film. So, and his favorite actor is Vijay Talapati, and he wants oh. to know from you what do you think about him and uh, from, about Vijay. You know, I'm I'm warming up to him. I I, I haven't really uh, I haven't seen something of his. Now, I haven't watched a lot of his films. I've only watched a few. I haven't seen one that's really really grabbed me. I'm excited for Leo. I really want to see Leo yeah. because you know. Uh, Lokesh Kanagaraj is so talented, um, uh, and I think if he's, you know, with that kind of filmmaker, I think that that's going to be something that could be uh, really cool to see. Um, I haven't, I haven't been disappointed by by uh, a Lokesh Kanagaraj film yet. Uh, I haven't seen Master just because I didn't realize that he directed that. Um, so I do need to go back and see that. But having seen Kaiti and 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 Vikram, and Vikram was so much fun. And you know, I had so much fun with that. And I'll I'll watch.
pretty much anything Kamal Hassan does. Um, yeah. So hopefully Leo's the one, you know, I would love to, and yeah. you know, if it, that's one that I wouldn't mind, you know, helping, uh, helping out the team on that one, working on that film, because I really think that Lokesh is, is a, a filmmaker to look out for. Still young. LCUD too, you know, Lokesh. Doing great yeah. Stuff. LCUD Lokesh Cinematic Universe. Yeah. And in fact, yeah. uh, in fact, in fact, in Jawan also, you know, there is a cameo of Vijay Talapati and Vijay Setupati is obviously there. So that's mm-hmm. again, that's again Shah Rukh Khan. So, you know, we, we have to do one separate episode for Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah. <laughs> Every guest I ask about Shah Rukh Khan. So it's, it's Vijay Setupati, another film, another, another performer that would be great to work with. I've been a yes. fan since, since Pizza, you know, I, I you know, Karthik yeah. Subaraj is another one of my favorite filmmakers and, uh, yes. and Pizza's, Pizza's great. Uh, uh, Sutu Kavam, also great. Uh, that's one that I really wanted to show at my film festival. Wasn't able to get that one. People would really enjoy that. Mm. Yes, yes. And the final question is from Vishal. Vishal, you can go ahead. You can unmute yourself and you can ask. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, my question is, uh, what do you think, what works for a film? Because despite uh, there are certain things which are good, but they didn't work at the theater. So what works for an audience? Yes, yes. Yeah, what works because there are many films that are good, but they didn't do well at the theater. But there are many films that are, uh, we can say average, but they really uh, resonated with the audience. I mean, there, there's, there's a, there are a complicated answers to that question. I mean, like with when I. Going back to just Triple R, and the, the reason it worked, I think, for, for international audiences was that it speaks a language that is international in, in terms of the, the action. Action is international. Um, it's, it's one thing that doesn't require uh, background. When it comes to local films and local audiences, I mean, you just have to know your audience. Um, like I said, Udda Ud Punjab is a great film. Uh, Gangs of Wasipur, great film. You know, there's, there are a lot of those films that are, that are really good that don't find an audience because they're they're setting their expectations sort of i think in the wrong direction i think a lot of it has to do with marketing and mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. and talking to the audience who you think will enjoy the film and not just talking to everybody targeting is very important you know mm-hmm. uh, it's it's also it's a problem of commerce like you have to figure out is the film that i'm making worth the money that i'm spending on it um you know if if it's a small film that you know is going to uh is not going to connect with a larger mainstream audience, then it doesn't make sense to spend a bunch of money on it. And that's where we see uh, films uh, losing money um, because they they just spent too much in the first place or went over their budgets or, or, or something like that. Yeah, yeah and uh, there's, a, there's a certain kind of film culture that exists uh, in India, especially, that is very sort of star-centric. You know, it's uh, the, yes, the yes. people love their film heroes. And so it doesn't necessarily matter if the film is any good. A lot of the time um, people will go out to support their heroes either way. And we see that, you know, every week when there are films from yeah. actors who have very loyal fan bases who go out and see the film. Uh, and so they'll have a big first day and then it just drops off completely because the yes, film yes. was wasn't good and this is happening unfortunately with with a lot of uh especially uh in hindi films a lot of uh the big sort of legacy stars who are not like the current generation of folks like the the 90s uh the 90s stars and early 2000 stars who are who are making films that you know feel lazy uh sometimes yeah yeah. you know uh i won't name names but i think you guys can figure out who those stars might be um yes yes but, you know, it's, it's a part of it is about respecting the audience and not just putting out a film because, oh, well, I, it's Eid now. We have to have a movie on Eid uh, for Eid. Or, you know, it's, <laughs> that's, that happens a lot. Yeah. You know, we have to have a certain star always <laughs> has a movie out on Eid. A certain star always has a movie out yeah. on Diwali. Or, you know, we know that yeah. our, 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 our Pongal in, in Chennai or, or whatever the, the thing might be, yeah. you know, the, the audience comes to expect it. And so it becomes more of a an expectation rather than something to look forward to, you know, and, exactly. and, and that's always a challenge. Yes. Yes. And with that, I think we also end the audience segment. Uh, and thank you so much, Josh, for joining with us, you know, for joining today. 
i hope that all of you those who watched live and those who are also watching it later you found this conversation interesting so you can consider it sharing with everybody and thanks once again for joining josh i hope you had a great time my pleasure thank you very much